Hello English speaking world, all the German learners, I greet you. In this video I will be talking about relative clauses and relative pronouns. Let's say you have a sentence like this. Die Frau öffnet die Tür. The woman opens the door. This sentence is very simple and it doesn't give you any information about which woman or which door you are talking about. To describe any of the nouns in more detail, you can add a subclause right after it. A subclause describing a noun is called relative clause and it works like this. Let's say you want to describe the woman in more detail. The information about the woman that you want to add can be described in a normal sentence like this. Die Frau hat blonde Haare. The woman has blonde hair. Now, to make it a relative clause, you do two things with the sentence. First, you remove the noun that you describe and put its article right at the beginning of the sentence. And then you need to use the subclause structure on it. You should already know that this means to put verb 1 at the end. Now you have your relative clause and you can insert it into your sentence right after the noun. Die Frau, die blonde Haare hat, öffnet die Tür. The woman, who has blonde hair, opens the door. To show that it is a subclause, like always, you need to put a comma before and after it. And that's all you need to do. Simple, right? How about we describe the door? Let's say we want to give this information about the door. Die Tür ist in der Mitte. The door is in the middle. You remove the noun that you're describing. Put the article first and verb 1 last. Then you add it after the noun in your sentence. Die Frau öffnet die Tür, die in der Mitte ist. The woman opens the door that is in the middle. You can have as many relative clauses as you have nouns. For example, Die Frau, die blonde Haare hat, öffnet die Tür, die in der Mitte ist. The woman who has blonde hair opens the door that is in the middle. Okay, that article which starts the relative clause is called relative pronoun. As it describes a noun, the relative pronoun looks like the definite article der, die, das, etc. It can never look like the indefinite article, ein, eine. It's specific, so it makes sense, right? Now, there are two cases in which the definite article and the relative pronoun are not exactly the same. If the description of your noun, so the relative clause, has the noun in the dative plural or the genitive, then you need to add un to the article. So, for example, die Haare der Frau sind blond. The hair of the woman is blonde. This description has the woman not as the subject, but as the owner of the hair, which is genitive. So you need to add un to the article to make it the relative pronoun. Die Frau, deren Haare blond sind, öffnet die Tür. The woman whose hair is blonde, opens the door. Let's look at the declination table. These are the normal articles. And now let's compare it to the relative pronouns. You see I marked the differences. I put a red box around the changes. The dative plural is denen, denen, denen. The genitive male and neutral is dessen, dessen, dessen. And the female and plural is deren, deren, deren. All the others are the same. Let's look at a couple more examples. Der Mann geht nach Hause. The man goes home. Der Mann hat viel getrunken. The man has drunk a lot. Der Mann, der viel getrunken hat, geht nach Hause. The man, who has drunk a lot, goes home. Der Apfel ist lecker. The apple is tasty. Du hast den Apfel gekauft. You bought the apple. 
Der Apfel, den du gekauft hast, ist lecker. The apple that you bought is tasty. Ich habe den Film gesehen. I've seen the movie. Du magst den Film. You like the movie. Ich habe den Film, den du magst, gesehen. I've seen the movie that you like. Der Mann ist ein Verbrecher. The man is a criminal. Du hast dem Mann das Geld gegeben. You gave the man the money. Der Mann, dem du das Geld gegeben hast, ist ein Verbrecher. The man whom you gave the money is a criminal. Der Verkäufer ist nicht zur Arbeit gekommen. The clerk didn't come to work. Das Kind des Verkäufers ist krank. The child of the clerk is ill. Der Verkäufer, dessen Kind krank ist, ist nicht zur Arbeit gekommen. The clerk, whose child is ill, didn't come to work. Der Freund war nicht da. The friend wasn't there. Ich habe das Geschenk für den Freund gekauft. I bought the present for the friend. Now watch out. In this example, there is a preposition in front of the noun. That is important. Prepositions need to stay with the article, which means they come before the relative pronoun that starts the subclause. Der Freund, für den ich das Geschenk gekauft habe, war nicht da. The friend, for whom I bought the present, wasn't there. By the way, you can also add a relative clause at the end of the sentence instead of directly after the noun. This is mostly done with objects because they are close to the end of the sentence anyway. So, for example, instead of Ich habe den Film, den du magst, gesehen, you can also say Ich habe den Film gesehen, den du magst. Bonus tip! There is an alternative relative pronoun, just like in English, where you have that and which. This alternative pronoun has the same meaning, but it is rarely used. You might see it in written formal language. It is very easy to learn. Just replace the D of the definite article by veg and you have it. There is no such alternative form for the genitive case, though. So, for example, these two sentences mean the same thing. Der Spieler der am meisten Punkte hat, gewinnt das Spiel. Der Spieler, welcher am meisten Punkte hat, gewinnt das Spiel. The player who has the most points wins the game. Let's look at the declination table of the alternative form. There is one little exception with das. It becomes welches, not welchas. Let's repeat what we've learned. If you want to add a specific description to a noun, you can do it by adding a relative clause. To do that, take the sentence you wish to add as a description and remove the noun and put its article at the beginning. Put verb 1 at the end, then insert the subclause after the noun. The subclause must start and end with a comma. The article starting the relative clause is called relative pronoun. It looks mostly like the definite article, but with the exceptions of dative plural and genitive. Those pronouns have an additional un at the end. If the noun is described by a preposition, this needs to be at the beginning of the subclause, even before the relative pronoun. You can also add relative clauses at the end of the sentence instead of after the noun. And there is a rather formal and written alternative relative pronoun. Just replace the D in the definite article by welch, and then you have it. Alright, that's it for today. Please like and share my video. And if you have any questions, write them in the comments and I will try to answer them. Vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit.